barbershop conversations, man. I'm just here to get my flower, give myself my flowers, man. You know what I mean? I, I don't need no one to give me my flowers. I don't need no one to unlock my door, knock on my gate and be like, hey, I got a delivery for you. Don't need it. <laughs> I had a chance to see the uh, the last half, not even the last half. I saw the, so, so you guys know where I can pick it up from. Um, the drawing in this Crowley. One, two PBC fighters on a DS on a DAZN card. <laughs> Let that sink in. Let that sink in. And two, this speaks volumes of how Lil Steven failed. When I say failed miserably, Jerron Ennis. You know, um, they had an absolute lob. When I say absolute lob with Jerron Ennis, because I believe that he fought on on Showtime Box. What's that called? Showtime? You know, the Friday night stuff? Showbox. Showbox, yeah. And Splendid. I believe some of those fights were in Philadelphia, right? And Jerron Ennis showed up and showed out. He is arguably one of the more physically gifted fighters that I have seen. I, I tell you guys all the time. That, that, that business acumen is just... I, I, I would give them an F. You know, because the fact that you would be loyal to someone because of your emotions and not because of what they can do business wise is a, is a complete fail. And uh, I'm going to sit back and enjoy Jerron in this. I think I might have to subscribe to the zone now. I might have to. Is anyone else still subscribed to Showtime? Like I told you guys to unsubscribe. I'm, giving, I'm just giving myself flowers in this video. You know what I mean? Ain't no boxing on Showtime. <laughs> I told you guys. Oh, uh, and. Um, also, um, I might have to get rid of my no because I like the NBA stuff, you know. As and I, when it gets to college basketball season, now that Lincoln's in the basketball show, at ESPN Plus is for basketball now, not boxing. I just get boxing because of it now, so I'll keep that for like nine ninety nine, ten ninety nine, whatever it is. But the zone, I might have to subscribe to the zone. They got all the fights. <laughs> they getting all the fighters, man. And uh, someone from the zone called me today and said we may be getting another PBC fighter. Uh, out of, I'm just gonna say out of Philadelphia, another Philadelphia fighter may be signing to the zone. Um, that's all I'm gonna say, you know. And uh, we'll see if they can get the deal done. But, um, um, you know. The opposite of hot. <laughs> the opposite. Of, what's the opposite of hot? <laughs> what's the opposite? What's the opposite of hot girl? <laughs> Anyways, man, that's what I'm hearing. You know, uh, so I will be right again, as I said. Oh, Fred, you ain't right. No, cool boy, Steph. If he has the gall to say it, to muster up and say it, he's not happy. He's not pleased. You know, what I mean, he's not pleased with his current fighting situation, as I told you guys. You know, what I mean, he hasn't fought in a year since May, right? Yeah, since the, they rescheduled that fight, right? Because someone was injured. So he might not have fought since. I don't know. You guys correct me. Was that fight postponed? Yeah, I think it was postponed. And I think he fought the same week as Earl Spence, if I'm not mistaken. So he's been out close to a year now. So, um, So with that being said... I I had a chance to look at the uh, the uh, the DS and it said Rider Season Boots Promotions, some energy drink, the Zone, and something else. So that means Rider Season is paying for the fight. The Zone is broadcasting it, and Boots Promotion is non-existent and. This is what's called pillaging the community. When someone comes in and gives up the front money. And uh, I don't know how ticket sales are going to do, but I can guarantee you Boots is going to draw minimum ten to 12,000 people. Because of uh, Philadelphia being a fight town, New Yorkers want to go to Philadelphia. Uh, they can spend a day. New Yorkers always want to spend a day in Philadelphia. 
I know because I'm a former New Yorker, right? We, we look for an excuse to spend the damn, spend the evening, go visit our cousins in Philadelphia, go get a cheese steak, go visit Moss number 12. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We always look for moments to, to spend the day in Philadelphia, you know? So um, I can see the Barclay crowd, maybe 5% of the Barclay crowd, a thousand people coming from New York. I can definitely see that. Uh, I, I can see people coming up from DC. Um, so, with that being said, it's uh, and it's expensive now too. So when New Yorkers leave New York, it's expensive. I don't know what the totals are on that ninety five now, um, but um, but yeah, New Jersey Turnpike. But anyways, um, with that being said, Boots Promotions. I saw that and I said, "Huh, Boots Promotion?" And I saw him with all that jewelry on. I'm like, "Don't put the cart before the horse." Now y'all gonna say, "Fred, you don't know what you're talking about." I'm a man that has built dynasties. I mean, I'm a man that, man, listen, y'all don't know my portfolio, but from an unemployment check to where I'm at now, y'all better shut up and listen. <laughs> y'all better take some notes. I told them what to do to begin with. I'm keeping it real. I told them what to do. NBA arenas from end of hockey playoffs, until uh, NBA and hockey season start, they need to fill that stadium. I'm going to keep it a buck. They need to fill that stadium. So I don't know what it costs, but let's say it costs $100,000 to rent that stadium out. It can't be a million because that's what you're probably going to make at the gate. So it's probably 100000 but they'll make a deal with you. We keep the parking. We keep the parking. We keep the concession stands and alcohol. All that, and we'll give it to you for fifty thousand. I don't know. It's it's, it's bartering, it's bartering. You know, what I mean, if you ever rented a venue, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And uh, uh, so, so with that, so sometimes they'll give it to you for free because it's dormant. You know what I mean? And they will base it, and then you can renegotiate after the pre-ticket sales. So if you get, so so let's say. They got, I heard him say in the press conference that it's doing really well. So let's say really well, I checked and see how many they hold, 16 and a half thousand, so close to 17,000. So let's say they have 5,000 pre-ticket sales, they, they're 33%. So now they can go back and say, here, here's the deal, here's where we're at. 5,000 tickets means we'll get at least this amount of cars. This is how much we're charging. Oh, we'll make the deal. We'll make the deal with you. You know what I mean? But these are the deals that these fighters will never, ever, never, when I say never, be previewed to. Eddie Hearn will never disclose, is he paying for the parking? Do they keep the parking, the food, the concession? Never, ever. The fighter will have to introduce that. And I say that because I gave... Remember during COVID, I said he was a part of the Cold War. I told you, Lou Steven was terrible for Boots in his career. I was a hater. Now look at me now. Look at me now. <laughs> I'm Swami Hawthorne, as my boy G would say. You know what I mean? I, I told you guys, this is what it is. And uh, I saw Boots promotions and I laughed because I realized black men... In box, and it's different from basketball, it's different from football. People say, Oh, go create your own league. You need 500 people to go with you. <laughs> you need, it's different, it's completely different. Boxing is its own entity because it's not governed by a union, it's not no overseas, no oversight committee from the government. It's none of that. You know what I mean? Fighters can even bet on themselves now. You can't even bet on yourself in the NBA or the NFL. You can bet on yourself in box. That's how unregulated it is. Imagine a fighter betting to win. What? Imagine if Floyd Mayweather bet the win because there's a there's a threshold. You can bet KO or you can bet the win. <laughs> you get it? I'm going 12 rounds, but I'm about to get on this bicycle, dog. What's the over under 10 and a half rounds? So we got to get the round 11. Okay, I got you. <laughs> like, it's insane, man. It's insane. So, so with that being said, that's where we're at. 
you know? So, but at the end of the day, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. Team Ennis has done a piss poor job managing their career. I don't know who's their manager. I don't know who's their promoter. But now it's time to get back on track. You got someone fronting you the money because you spent your money on jewelry. <laughs> like, I don't understand these guys, man. You know, spending all that money on jewelry. And you could have rented out the Wells Fargo Arena and got a couple million back in return. Imagine, imagine you get the gate and the parking lot. Man, come on, man. Come on, man. Y'all have no idea. But we're, we're going to, they want to keep us in this nigga realm. Oh, go get the jewelry. Go get the cars. Be flashy. Be loud. Talk that ish. But the moment you say, how much are you charging per car? And we're scheduled to have a, if it's two, if it's 16,000 people and the average person Average person in the car is two, and 30% take public transit. So that means 70%, 70% of, uh, of 16,000. What's well, 70% of 16,000? Quick math, baby daddies. 1,600 is what? Exactly, 10%. 16, 32, 48, 60, 72, 84. Get it? So 8,400 people will be in cars. Cut that in half. What is that? What's half of 84? 42? 4,200 cars. You times that by $50? <sighs> Come on, man. Come on, man. 4,200 cars? <sighs> What's 42 times 10? 42,000. 42,000, 84,000, 84,000? What's 84 plus 84? 168? 172? 182? 192? 202? $212,000 just in parking. Tax-free. I repeat. The government cannot, they don't even, they can't, they don't even know how to count them. Tax free. How can the government go back and say, you had this many cars in the parking lot? Oh my God. This is why I am who, this is why I got these books. See these books? I've read them. All these books, I've either written them or read them. Look, read them. Pick a book. I read them. I still ain't. I still got. <laughs> man, listen, man. So the point I'm making is it's, it's behind you now, Jerron Ennis. Make great business decisions because, like I said, you are a generational talent. You're like my son. My son is a generational talent. I know it. I know my son's a generation. Y'all can see the highlights on the internet. Third grade. He's averaging 30 points in the third grade without putting him against any kid, any level. Man, he's averaging like 30. <laughs> you know? So the point I'm saying is this. Jerron, your dad has failed you in terms of business and training. He's probably the best trainer, right? Because you are who you are. We're not disputing your talent. We're disputing your, I am disputing your business acumen. Google Steven has failed you. Eddie Hearn saved another black fighter. And all these black people are going to buy tickets and he's going to get a percentage of it. And he's going to live happily ever after. And he, he Eddie Hearn is living his best life now. You know what I mean? Because uh, he gets to. Um, he, he gets to parade around the world on another on another man's dime, you know. He's on he's on OPM time, you know. So um I wish you well. Does Eddie Hearn have a family? I know he's married. How many kids does he have? Because we've never seen his kids. Like, God damn. I'm like, Eddie, are you married? Like, like, like for real. Like, do you have time for your family? <laughs> like, 
<laughs> like for real, you you out of town way too much to be a father, man. I'm gonna just leave it at that, man. But y'all go ahead. I, I I think Eddie Hearn, in terms of boxing, is on cloud nine. You know, what I mean, he's he's definitely on cloud nine. And Jerron Ennis, you you getting a new beginning, but you better take my advice from this point forth. All your fans, oh, he's a hater. No, I told you what was gonna happen. From day one, I told you I was correct. Now, I'm going to tell you again from this point forward. When you look up, I think you're probably going to do minimum ten to 12,000 people. You may even sell the joint out. I don't know. You know, I don't know what the tickets are going for. July, people are going to be starving. I don't know if the Phillies are in town that weekend. Hopefully, they're not in. Hopefully, they out of town and they're not playing the Mets. That's all I'm saying. Or the Yankees, you know, because now they do interleague games now. And if they're not, you in business, dog. I'm going to keep it a buck. Sports fans, they just, man, listen. If y'all can find a way to intertwine Ali, Cherry Hill, Frazier, Rocky. Muhammad Ali's wife is still alive. Jerron Ennis. I have, their, I have her contact information. You should reach out to her and she give you a tour. The promo should be Joe Frazier's old gym. And you going up to Ali's. It, it got to be big. It got July 13th. It got to be big. You know what I mean? You got to attach yourself to these greats. You got to attach yourself to Joe Frazier, you know, and, uh, and she give you a tour of the old gym. Now it's like a museum or something. They got the rocks with the fighters' names on. I haven't been, but I've seen the videos. That would be big. That would be huge. You know, hopefully, I already know y'all gonna go to the Rocky statue. I, that, that's just par for course. Y'all going to the Rocky statue today to do a face off. <laughs> like, that's just common nature, you know. Find a way to get Bernard Hopkins into this promo. Um, you got to bring, this is the first Philly fight in a long time. You got to bring it full circle. Who's the quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles? You got to spend the two hours with him. What's his name? What's his name, dog? I didn't like him at first, but my y'all y'all convinced me on the live show. What's his name, man? Anyways, y'all know who I'm talking about. He's the starting quarterback for the Eagles. And uh, um, um, you got to spend a day with him or two couple hours with him. And you got to get it done. Anyways, man, have a great day. I, I, I wish you well. But I'm giving myself flowers, man, because you sitting on the DS with Eddie Hearn tells, you, tells me everything. That everything. And now you got to get Boots promotion because the next Philadelphia fight better be just Boots promotion. Just Boots promotion. Just Boots promotion. It can't be in association. with You don't need it. Because if you're going to make a few million dollars, from this fight, you better start making seventy-five thousand dollars on them local fights. Times that by once a month. Seventy-five times ten is seven hundred fifty thousand. Add another hundred fifty. That's nine hundred thousand. And you get the parking. You get the parking. Government can't quantify parking. How? Government can't quantify how many hot dogs you sold. How? That's why every time you go to these local events, they got cash boxes. <laughs> Y'all go ahead and have a great day, man. Barbershop Conversations, man. Feel free to subscribe. Congratulations, Jerron Ennis. And the fact, you ain't got to say I was right. The fact that you're with Eddie Hearn and fighting at home like I advised you to. But I told you, you need to hook up. Remember, go check the videos. I said, Jerron, you need to put on a fight with J-Rock, Tevin Farmer, who's a hustler. And cool boy Steph, y'all need to go put on a card, two and two. You got a whole bunch of Philly fights. It'll set out. Come on, man. Come on, man. Meet and greet and partner up somehow, some way. Meet and greet, drawn in his fights. Who's on the co -main? And then you announce the next fight. We got a Philadelphia uh, residency of fighters all summer long. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. That's why... That's why I have a, 
um, handmade bookshelves. That's all. Peace.